Steam locomotives in miniature at the Steam Workshop. This is part 18, boiler fittings and a repair to the superheater. In the last episode, I did a dummy run of fitting the fittings to find out which one went where. Now I know I can put them in place using some Loctite 542. I always use 542 on boiler fittings and my boiler fittings never seem to leak. What you have to be careful of though with this stuff is not to spill it on the paint because it's quite an effective paint remover so in this clip I'm using a piece of tissue paper to remove any surplus so it doesn't run down the paint. This is the upper part of the water gauge being fitted into position. What I have to do now before the Loctite sets is put the glass in place to align the two fittings. If the water gauge fittings are not perfectly aligned, when the boiler warms up, the fittings move around a little bit so they're likely to snap the glass. But hopefully that's not going to happen in this case. I'm taking a little bit of time to make sure that the glass sits perfectly in the centre of both fittings. By holding this glass against the fittings, I can estimate how long the glass needs to be. If it's too long, it will cover the hole from the boiler and won't work at all. In this clip I'm using a needle file just to make a small scratch on the glass. And then I put the piece of glass on the bench and using the edge of the same needle file I make a deep indentation over half of the diameter of the glass. And then between my fingers I just snap the glass in half. I don't normally use this kind of glass tube, this is more like thermometer tubing but it makes it easier to read the water level, allegedly. It didn't break quite so cleanly as the normal glass that I use. So I cleaned up both ends of the glass tubing on the belt sander. This removed the sharp edges, which made it much easier to handle. A quick tip though, do not use a grinding wheel for this job. A belt sander is okay because it's gentle. From my experience, when using a grinding wheel to clean up the edge of a piece of glass, the glass fractures. I fitted the glass tubing in place using two pieces of silicone rubber tubing that I cut from a longer piece. You can use silicone rubber o-rings for this job, but they didn't have any at the steam workshop at the time when I needed them. Whether you use silicone o-rings, or pieces cut from silicone rubber tubing, it's very important not to over tighten the nuts. They really need to be finger tight, because the glass is not very flexible. But the fittings are, in as much as when the boiler gets hot they expand and when the boiler goes cold they contract. So if the silicone rubber tubing is too tightly held against the glass tube, it will fracture. Take my word for it, I've done it many times. I think I'll take a break from fitting the fittings and have a look at the front of the boiler, but there is a problem. If you look on the superheater combining pipe, which combines the four elements of the superheater into one, which in turn then fastens onto the union that feeds the cylinders, there is a small hole in it, an evidence of it having a pipe in here at some time. Now, I don't get this. I really am puzzled by this. Someone could have fitted a snifting valve. And you may ask at this stage, what is a snifting valve? Well, let me explain. When a steam locomotive is working and the steam regulator is opened, the steam goes from the wet header, that's the top part, through the superheaters and back out to the cylinders. The wet header is the part that's held to the front of the boiler by these four slotted screws or bolts. And this part is called the wet header because basically, as you open the regulator, it's providing wet steam to the superheater. In case you wonder what I'm doing at the moment, I'm cleaning up the part because we're going to re-silver solder this, so it needs to be very, very clean indeed. Back to the explanation about the snifting valve. The purpose of a snifting valve, and it's just a one-way valve, it's nothing clever. Without a snifting valve fitted, when you shut the regulator, as the engine is running down the track, Suddenly the cylinders will start acting as air pumps, which in turn causes a braking effect on the locomotive's progress. So a sniffling valve lets air into the system and it lets air into the superheater. So as an educated guess, at some stage in this engine's life, someone was going to fit a sniffing valve but never got round to it and the pipe must have got broken off at some time. What we're going to do is plug this hole using a 1 8 of an inch diameter rivet that I've just tapped into the hole. And this is John's hand, which is a lot cleaner than mine for some reason, but never mind. And he's applying the silver solar flux also to the part that's going into the hole, the 1 8 rivet. And just to be sure there's enough flux, he's applying a little bit more. And now he's going to use an oxyacetylene torch. This torch is more than capable of cutting through steel by melting it, so he's been very careful and he hasn't got the thing turned up full blast. 
This oxyacetylene system allows you to apply an incredibly high amount of heat to a very small part of the boiler, and in no time at all the silver solder melts and flashes round the joint. And the only bit that really got hot was the combining tube on the superheater. In the last episode I showed how the regulator was stuck, and I didn't use any force, but I just gently moved it a few times and suddenly it freed off and it was OK. So now I'm putting the arm back on the regulator shaft. Normally on a British steam locomotive the regulator hangs down from a valve on the top of the boiler, but I can't do that with this one because it fouls the firehole door, so I have to put it in this position, which makes it easier to drive because after all it's a miniature locomotive driven by completely overscale hands. I was quite pleased when the regulator started working because originally it did work, it was just a bit stuck. So now it's time to fit the rest of the boiler fittings, starting with the injector steam valve. To save time, I'm not going to show the application of the Loctite 542, just take it as read that any of these fittings, well, not this union nut, but any of the valve fittings, are fitted to the manifold using Loctite 542 as a sealant. On screen at the moment, I'm fitting the pressure gauge siphon, and as you can see, one end of this siphon is blocked up with a blanking plug. That's left over from the hydraulic test that was done on the boiler before I commenced the rebuild of the engine. And now I've removed the blanking plug, it's time to fit the pressure gauge. I'm not sure about this pressure gauge because it was reading 30 psi just sat on the bench. So I took it apart and readjusted the mechanism, but I think maybe a new one's in order. But I'll fit it for the time being to show how I fit it. Plus it gives me a chance to try out my new toy. This is a Coventry Mechanism Watchmaker Spanner and it's slightly adjustable. There's one in the box at the steam workshop, and once I saw this I thought, well, I'm going to try and buy one. And I was lucky enough to find one on eBay, so I bought it. And this was complete with its original leather pouch. It's a clever design, very easy to use, and it's adjustable to take different sizes. Thinking about it, I had a girlfriend like that once. I digress, back to the job. I'm fitting the safety valves into the newly cleaned holes and everything's fine and this is the cover that goes on the top. The cover just sits loosely on top of the boiler but it looks quite nice. I had a quick rummage through the box of piping and I found a pipe that goes from the turret to the injector. And this is a pipe just as I removed it off the engine and this is the pipe after cleaning it up using the polishing spindle. This clip shows me adjusting the position of the blower valve using my barco spanner as usual. The original pipe from the blower valve to the hollow stay that goes through the boiler, which then blows a jet of steam up the chimney at the smoke box end, was terrible. It was totally unserviceable, so I quickly silver soldered up a new pipe for this part. This is what's left in the box of bits to fit to the engine. Some of it I will replace, some of it I will use. I didn't like the way the original whistle valve was mounted, it was just dangling between two lengths of pipe. So I'm going to modify the way this is mounted. What I'm doing at the moment is drilling a hole in the end of the turret. First using a smaller drill, so if I need to I can use a needle file to correct the hole. Then I use the 7 seconds of an inch diameter drill, which is tapping size for quarter by 40. In the clip that you've just seen, the camera angle makes it look like the tap's going in at the wrong angle, but it isn't. And here is the proposed modification. First of all a double union screwed in place, with a short piece of pipe to support the whistle valve, but in the end I didn't do it this way. I came up with what I thought was a better idea, and you will see that in the next episode. It's time now to fit the boiler to the engine. A steam locomotive's blast pipe and the blower only work properly, providing there's no air leaks in the smoke box. And that's why the smoke boxes always have a special arrangement to make sure the smoke box door is an airtight fit on the front of the smoke box. And that's why I'm applying some sealant to this end of the smoke box where the boiler fits to make sure there's no leaks from here either. Before I can conclude the fitting of the boiler, I have to fit the ash pan in place because the boiler holds the ash pan in position on top of the axle box horns. And to stop the ash pan vibrating loose, there's just one bolt that holds it in place. And now when I sit the engine on the bench, as you can see the boiler is fitted. And with the gunmetal dome and safety valve fittings, it looks good. And to finish the job, I used a piece of brass boiler banding where the boiler wrapper meets the smoke box. That's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.